Hello, fandom. This is A Cold Peace with your host, Alex Garcia, a.k.a. the best that ever did it. And today I'm going to look at this article here by the Mary Sue. Who else? You know, Notre Dame coach Muffet McGraw, Muffet, has had it with gender discrimination in college sports. Let's go. Before we start, I'd like to let you know I have a graphic novel, Johnny's Law, coming to Indiegogo this year. Johnny Lau is the world's best assassin. When he is manipulated into killing a kid and refuses, he must protect the kid in a deadly Texas town. Script is by yours truly with art by Ibai Canales. Subscribe for more content and updates on this as well. Okay, so Little Miss Muffet here. <laughs> I never thought I would be able to call somebody Little Miss Muffet. Uh, she is this head coach now, I guess. Um, she's done hiring men, it says. Women's basketball coach talked about the declining number of female coaches in college athletics and the harassment and discrimination those women who are hired have to face. For some background, the article's author, Lindsay Gibbs, writes, Before Title IX, the federal law that bans sex discrimination in education and women and men's athletics programs are more or less separate. Women's sports were, for the most part, run by women. Um, okay. Shouldn't they be? After Title IX was introduced, most athletic departments merged, and male athletic directors took over the women were kept around as <laughs> secretaries. According to them, right? You know, I mean, you know they make anything up. Uh, for the last seven years, McGraw has had only female coaches on her staff. And when asked if she plans to hire a male coach in the future, as she has for decades before, because, you know, now it... <coughs> It's about equality. It's about uh, everybody being equal. Uh, so what does she say? No. No, I'm not going to hire men. I want equality, but I'm not going to hire men. Because, you know, they're so toxic. And, you know, I don't want to be anybody's secretary. So at a press conference Thursday, McGraw was asked about these those comments and asked how seriously does she take being that voice. It, it, they say being that voice as if, as if this is something it's necessary. Like, I, I don't get it. Do you? Let me look back at her picture. Do you have? She has a ring. She's she's. Well, never mind. She's probably married to a freaking Beta. Anyway, um. So, presumably meaning a voice calling for gender parity in college sports. No, she's not, because she's not hiring men. Let's not forget. She did not hold back in her response. She came with fire, and she came with facts. Oh, let's see if this is going to actually be facts or feelings. Did you know that the Equal Rights Admin Amendment was introduced in 1967, and it still hasn't passed? Really? Hmm. She said, we need 38 states to agree that discrimination on the basis of sex is unconstitutional. We've had a record number of women running for office and winning. And still, we have 23% of the House and 25% of the Senate. Okay, so let's see here. Go to Google. How? Many women are in the House of Representatives. 102 women. Look, would you look at that? Okay, are in the. I'm a slow typer. Leave me alone. Senate. How many women are in the Senate? Women are in the Senate. As of 2017, 21 women. Let's see, wait. Comprising of the 535 members, 21 women serving the United States Senate, and 84 serving the United States House of Representatives, is actually gone up. Okay? 
So let's see how many men. Uh, male senators are there. 46 Hispanic and Latino or Latino. Okay. I'm not sure. Um, okay, so hold on. See, this is this is what gets me. House of Representatives. How many males in the House of Representatives? Okay. Okay, so and forgive me if I don't know this stuff already, because I don't I'm not a government guy. I don't really keep up with all that stuff. I wasn't, you know, government wasn't my strongest class, you know. Anyway, but it seems like there's there's an you know a balanced amount. So if it's not enough, what are you saying? You're saying that you don't care about representation equally, right? You what you care about is we don't want men. Period. I mean that's what it all boils down to. She goes on to say, she says, I'm getting tired of the novelty of, of the of the first female governor of this state, the first Afri- female African-American mayor of the city. She continued, when is it going to be the norm instead of the exception? Women in leadership positions are too often still an anomaly in most industries. Girls can get inspired by seeing the first person that looks like them moving into a leadership role, but ubiquity in those roles is even more inspiring. We don't have enough female role models. <laughs> oh my gosh. Like, what are you talking about? Like, I don't get it. I really don't. I don't, I don't, I don't understand. What do you mean? There's not enough. You're basically, uh, you say 23 and 25%, like, and there's a lot of them. So what is the problem? You know, it's not enough. It's never enough. And see, this is the reason why we have this, these, uh, these, um, how do you call it? Sorry. (laughs) Oh, I started to get mad. This is why we have all of this disagreement and this discourse about this. Because it's not the fact that we don't want you there or the fact that we, you know, hate you or any of that. It has nothing to do with it. It's that you you don't care. You're not, you're not satisfied with anything, you know. You just, you want and you take and you take and you take. Because to you, we got to make up for whoever knows how many years, you know. That's ridiculous. She says all these millions of girls that play sports across the country, they could come out every day and we're teaching them great things about life skills. The men aren't though, right? Men, the men don't don't teach the girls because they had them separate, right? Now that they merged it, this is an opportunity for the men to impart their um, experience and understanding. You know what I mean? To learn. Um, sort of to even master a new craft because women are physically biologically ooh, ooh, don't say that too loud you know physically biologically different and they could really un- learn to understand how that differs in the game and then you know they could all like learn from each other this whole uh reciprocity of of uh equality and all that but that's not what they want they don't want that you feel what I'm saying? They want to take over. They want everything. They the whole shebang bang. You know what I mean? Hats, socks, shoes, and drawers. They want it all. You know they, they don't want to hear that. Oh well, you know we'll, we'll you know we'll, we'll let you guys you know we'll join together and let's join forces. No, no, I don't want that. <laughs> uh, just like when you when you when you tell your wife you you know or tell a woman. You know, I'm about to go in here and get something to eat. You want something to eat? They're like, no, I'm okay. I don't want I don't want anything. I don't want it. And then you come out there with a big old fat, you know what I'm saying, double stack, triple dipple, you know what I'm saying, dripping cheeseburger and a, and a gang of fries. And what's the first thing they do? Let me have a bite. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, no, man, you say you didn't want nothing, you know? Uh, she says, we're teaching them great things about life skills, but it wouldn't, but wouldn't it be great if we could teach them how to, how women lead? (laughs) There is such a high number of, of these girls that are going to become women 
and and those that are teenagers in college and and or young adults in college and becoming women that don't want to do that that's not you you keep making it like you you have this thing where you want to prove a point but you're proving a point with a, a good number of people who don't even care about that you know it's like the opposite with the SJWs in the comic industry. They don't even really care about comics. They don't really want to buy comics. They just want to have, you know, uh, Captain America and Bucky Barnes, you know, shipped and 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 uh, Venom and and Eddie Brock shipped and you know, it's just that's all. And once they get what they want, then they're done with it. And say, uh, screw the people who care about it. You know what I mean? She says right now, less than 5% of women are CEOs of Fortune 500 companies. So yes, when you look at men's basketball and 99% of the jobs go to men, why shouldn't 100 or 99% of the jobs in women's basketball go to women? Maybe it's because we only have 10% women athletic directors in Division 1. I'm trying out different voices if you haven't figured it out by now. I'm looking for that perfect blend. Um... People hire people who look like them, and that's the problem. Maybe that's it. Maybe that one. I like that. Uh, Muffet McGraw, a voice for women, for women everywhere. I stand in solidarity with you, my sister. I am a male feminist. Uh, let's see. Well, not, nothing else. I mean, they don't really. I know, right? Muffet. <laughs> oh my gosh. All right, man. You guys. Just let me know what you think about all this. Um, like I said, I'm not really a big sports person, but, you know, I just thought this was an interesting article and it really kind of pissed me off because I already knew that, that it wasn't going to be about equality. You know what I mean? Especially it's in the Mary Sue. <sighs> anyway, uh, make sure to subscribe, like, and share. Also, keep up with my channel so you can get more news about my graphic novel coming soon to any go-go called Johnny's Law. And thank you for watching. See you in the next one. Peace.